Shalom, shalom, most high in Christ, blessed, happy Sabbath. I'm your brother Jacob. And to my left, I'm your brother Joab. Now, it don't matter what kind of mood you're in. When you hear that song right there, mm -hmm. it should completely change your mood, man. Yeah. We've been through a gamut of emotions lately, but that right there, now we're in our safe space. Our safe space. Right. Um, so today we're getting into the topic of Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread and, uh, a lamb foreign house. Now, let me say this. We, we're doing things kind of different traditionally from other congregations because of things that we noticed. So our Passover will be Monday night and our Feast of Unleavened Bread will be Tuesday night. But we're going over the scriptures today because when you rent a venue and you do all these things, you only have so much time. So instead of having a two hour class and everybody sitting there waiting to eat and all that kind of stuff, we have the class now then when we come together, we enjoy each other. Right. That's the way we're doing it. And we ain't saying that what we're doing is righteous and somebody else is wicked. We're not doing that. We're not saying nothing evil about anybody. So, <clears throat> we're going to go over um, the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But, uh, customary, we're going to open up with some scriptures and uh, we're going back to Ezekiel chapter 33 <clears throat> and verse 7. Shalom, most high in Christ, bless. Happy Sabbath to the 12 scattered abroad. The book of Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 7. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth. 
and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Right, keep going, keep going. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked man of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. So basically he's saying, if you, we were given commandments by God on how we should walk and live our lives. How we should reverence the Most High, do what He said, and how we supposed to love one another. In that right there, you have all of the law. Now, if you don't, if you're warned and you don't turn away from sin and go back to keeping the, God's commandments, then He is saying that you're gonna be cut off and you're gonna die. Now jump down to verse thirteen. Verse thirteen. When I, when I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trust to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, mm -hmm. all his righteousness shall not be remembered. So whatever you've done before in the past, being righteous, if you turn back to sin, go ahead. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall surely die for it. Now, everybody lives and dies this is talking about when that day come when that day come and you got to stand before the most high and be judged then what this is what he's saying if you if you're righteous and you turn from being righteous and go back to being wicked mm -hmm. your righteousness will not be remembered and at the same time if you're wicked and you turn to righteousness your wickedness will not be remembered which do you want mm. yeah right the whole object is to be obedient to the Most High. Now, this way, I got to see something. Because <clears throat> this ain't talking to that man that's on his deathbed, neither. He's been doing <laughs> right. wickedness all his damn life. Then all of a sudden, because he's on his deathbed, he want to turn to righteousness. No, we're not talking about you. <clears throat> so, let's go to Exodus chapter 11. We have to revisit this. Matter of fact, man. Matter of fact, man, let's go to uh, Exodus 24 first. Okay. Let me make a point. So, whoever's watching, take notes. You might want to go get something to eat and something to drink because we're going to go through some scriptures today. But watch this Exodus 24 and verse. Six. The book of Exodus, <clears throat> chapter 24 and verse 6. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant mm -hmm. and read in the audience of the people. Mm -hmm. And they said, all that the Lord hath said will we do and be obedient. So we said, our forefathers, we said, all that thou hast said, all meaning all the stuff that you have commanded us to do, we will do and be obedient. That's the covenant. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 8. And Moses <clears throat> took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. So that animal blood was sprinkled upon us. So we had the commandments and we had blood of animals mm -hmm. and we were bonded into this we were bonded into this covenant so what we're about to read we're going back to exodus 11 all these things that he commanded us to do we said we will do and be obedient so um like your new moon your passover your feast of unleavened bread we said we will do these things exodus 11 and 1 we left off last week with we're going through the curses and there's one last curse <laughs> one last curse remember now uh, hold on before we go to Exodus 11 let's go to Exodus 4 and 22 real quick mm -hmm. 
the message that the Lord sent to Pharaoh. And I told y'all why he, I asked the question, why did he send that message to Pharaoh? The whole thing is a setup. The book of Exodus, chapter 4, and verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Right. Because his father had the, uh, our young men put to death. He was trying his best to yep. slay the, the young men of Israel. Go ahead. Verse 23. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. So the whole thing is a setup for him to kill the firstborn of Pharaoh and all his servants. And why? To show everybody in the world, you don't mess with me. That's you don't mess with me and mine. He gave them, can we say eight chances? Nine. Nine chances. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gave him nine chances, man. He had mercy. <laughs> also hard this heart. <laughs> right. <laughs> Exodus 11 and verse 1. <clears throat> The book of Exodus, chapter 11 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speak now in the ears of the people and let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor mm -hmm. jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave people, gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out in the midst of Egypt. See, he said, About midnight, in the middle of the night, I will go out into the midst of Egypt. Go ahead. Verse 5. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill and all the firstborn of beasts. Man, I don't think people really understand the God of Israel. man. Because, mm -hmm. you know, saying that he's all love. The Lord is all love. But when you outside of that love. You're going to get punished for it. Right. Now, like you, we read in the Apocrypha, when he's dealing with the other nations, he, he'll, he'll get them more time. But with us, the punishment comes swiftly. <clears throat> but the Lord is not some, he's not to be played with. Because when he, when, like the scripture said, when he do something, he do it forever. Mm -hmm. And he ain't no joke, because like with um, Amalek, I don't. I, uh, I think he waited like four hundred years or something to go and punish them for what they had done. He waited all that time, right. like he ain't forgetting. People really don't understand the Lord, but he's 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 bringing the plague upon Pharaoh first, and then Pharaoh's people, the Egyptians and their servants. Don't matter what nation you from, mm -hmm. if that blood ain't over the door, your firstborn dying. Because the Lord said so. Go ahead. <clears throat> Verse 6. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it anymore. Right. So when, when he comes at midnight, there's going to be a great cry in the land of Egypt. Remember this. All this stuff is important. Go ahead. Verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Mm, go ahead. And all these thy servants shall come down unto me and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out and all the people that follow thee. And after that, I will go out. So he's telling Pharaoh this. 
And all thy servants shall come down unto me and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out. <laughs> Go ahead. And he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his hand, out of his land. Right, right. So you'll notice all through this, the Lord gives Moses a commandment. He tells him what he's going to uh, say to Pharaoh and what he's going to do, and it all comes to pass, right? So <clears throat> pay close attention, y'all. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Right. Go ahead. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Right, a lamb for an house. Now, what this is going into, um, a lamb for an house, the man, the, the, the husband, the father, that is the lamb of the house. You men, you're supposed to be the lamb of the house. You're responsible for your household. You're responsible for your wife mm -hmm. and your children. You are that lamb. Matter of fact, since I'm saying this, give Exodus, I'm mean not Exodus, Ezekiel 34 real quick. Last verse. Give me 30 and 31. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 34 and verse 30. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord. Go ahead. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. Are men. The flock of my pasture are men. So mm. the Lord deals with the men. Right. That's why Adam was punished. He could have corrected Eve and went on. Mm-hmm. But he went into that same sin. So he now we're all punished. Finish that out. And I am your God, saith the Lord God. Right. Now back to Exodus 12. And verse, verse 4. Yeah, verse 4. The book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 4. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor Next unto his house, take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Yeah, hold on a second. I just thought about something else. Ephesians, Ephesians 5, I believe. Because in the title, you know, I got a lamb for a house. Mm -hmm. So that man is the lamb of the house in Christ is the lamb for the, for house, the house of, of Israel. Israel. Wow. Yeah, Ephesians right. 5. <clears throat> Ephesians 5. Start at 22. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Just like when you look at the, co the future covenant, mm -hmm. when we're bonded into it, that remember the marriage, <laughs> it's the marriage of Christ <laughs> and the woman right, Israel. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> Verse twenty three, for the husband is the head of the wife. You go all the way back to Genesis uh, three. Right. The prophecy of Christ. Um, the head being bruised. Mm -hmm. That's Christ. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Even as Christ is the head of the church, mm -hmm. and he is the savior of the body. Go ahead. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. 
Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church mm -hmm. and gave himself for it. Right. Using it as a similar to, mm -hmm. which it is 100%. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Even the being the marriage is a covenant. Mm -hmm. Just like when the marriage to come, Lord's will, we be part of it. Right. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. Go ahead. Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, mm. that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Oh, my goodness. Go ahead. Verse 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Mm -hmm. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even Amen. as the, the Lord, Lord the, the church. church. Last verse, verse 30. Verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. We're his household. He's the lamb of the household. Of Israel. Mm. Uh, before we go back, let me double check something. I was thinking about something else. I don't want this to be too long. Bear with me one second. Give me, uh, let's go to 1 Timothy real quick. 1 Timothy 3. I think I need to go back. You see, I remember when I first came in, my elders were telling me that you know, like your house is your first church. Yep. All of this, all of this goes together. Yep. Um, your first, con yep. Your first congregation. Yep. Start at verse two. <clears throat> the book of First Timothy, chapter three, and verse two. A bishop then must be blameless. Remember, Christ is called the bishop of our souls mm -hmm. in the book of Acts. Go ahead. The husband of one wife, mm -hmm. vigilant, sober, of good behavior. Given to hospitality, apt to teach, mm -hmm. not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, mm -hmm. having his children in subjection with all gravity. Go ahead. For Last verse, verse five. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Right. Bro. <laughs> Bro. That's, that's Christ right there all day. Yes. That's Christ. Over the house of Israel. Right there all day. <sighs> Over the house of Israel. Now back to Exodus 12 and 4. The book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 4. And if the household... Be too little for the lamb. Let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Mm -hmm. Your lamb shall be without blemish. That's Christ. A oh, male. That's Christ. <laughs> and it's supposed to be us. We're supposed to follow the image of Christ. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to follow Christ in all things. Go ahead, lamb without blemish. A male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, mm -hmm. and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now, this is where controversy comes in. So, at the beginning of the day is even, and at the end of the day is even. And people get confused right here. This, the Passover itself is on the 14th day. I'm just, before we get into all that, I'm just giving you one little sneak peek. Numbers 28. 
just want one verse. You keep saying this over and over. And I'm telling you now, some of this stuff is confusing. But we're going to go over the ordinances, and that should help you 100%. Numbers 28 and verse 16. The book of Numbers, chapter 28 and verse 16. And in the 14th day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. See? In doesn't say um, at the end of the 14th day. Right. It says in, in the 14th day of the first month is Passover. Back to Exodus 12. So you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. The mm -hmm. whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So what that means is <clears throat> in the evening as it's getting dark. Mm-hmm. Before the 14th day comes in is when you slay or you kill, because it, it says kill, you kill the Passover. Remember, the Lord said he going to come through about midnight. Midnight. Mm -hmm. Right. Midnight, while you're in the house and the deaf angel is coming through putting people to death. Um, Wait. Yeah, read it again. Read six again. The book of Exodus, <clears throat> chapter 12, and verse 6. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel, um, yeah, Israel, shall kill it in the evening. Right. So every house has to kill their own lamb. Okay, all this stuff is, is what got my mind ticking. Like, wait a minute. Why does every house have to have a lamb? Because that's you. Yep. You men. Yep. Go ahead. Verse oh, and you you supposed to be giving yourself. Yourself. Mm -hmm. You're all, like Christ said. I mean, not Christ. Paul said, I die daily. He said, this is our reasonable service. Go ahead. Verse mm -hmm. 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Right. So that's a that's an ordinance. Go ahead. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. In that night. Go roast ahead. with fire. Roast with fire. This is important. The Passover has to be roasted with fire. And even that represents something. Mm -hmm. That represents us in captivity. We're burning in this in captivity. We're in hell. Right. Burning. The furnace of adversity. Right. Hold on. Leviticus 1 real quick. Okay. See, people, they'll read Galatians and see where the law was to lead us to Christ. It's not talking about basic commandments. It's talking about animal sacrifice. You're supposed to be able to look at these sacrifices and see Christ in it. And you're supposed to see you too. Because right. you're supposed to be doing the same thing. Read verse 9. The book of Leviticus chapter 1 and verse 9 but his inwards and his legs shall be washed in water that's we supposed to our inwards supposed to be washed in water we're going to read later on cuz you supposed to <laughs> your your hands and your feet supposed to be washed mm -hmm. and Christ start washing their feet man Bro, it's so many. It's so many similar tools in the scriptures. It's so many. Go ahead. And the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice. That's us. We're in the furnace of adversity. We're in captivity. The iron furnace, burning in captivity, and it's a sweet savor to the Lord. He's punishing us, and it pleases Him to punish us for all the wickedness we've done. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. An offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. See? See? Matter of fact, read verse 10 too. Verse 10. And if his offering be of the flocks, namely of the sheep, sheep. or of the goats. See, the sheep are the good ones. Goats is the wicked ones. Go ahead. For a burnt sacrifice, he shall bring it. A male without blemish. Right. So at the end of it, we supposed to be without blemish, just like Christ. Now back to Exodus 12. 
Verse 8. Verse 8. Read mm -hmm. verse 8 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 8. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. And with bitter herbs they shall eat it. So here's another place where we tend to get confused. Because the unleavened got thrown in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you understand, any offering that you make to the Lord, it cannot be with leavened Leaven. bread. It makes sense. It, it has sense. to be unleavened. Put the title back up there. It makes sense. But see, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is different from just having uh, uh, unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. That's why I like this verse right here. Matter of fact, Jeremiah, read that. Shalom, most high in Christ, bless. It's the book of First Edris, chapter 1 and verse 19. So the children of Israel, which were excuse me, which were present held the Passover at that time mm -hmm. and the Feast of Sweet Bread seven days. See, so there it calls it sweet bread. Right. It's not just, you know, just plain uh, unleavened bread mm -hmm. like with the Passover meal. These are sweet cakes right. in the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You can, you can switch back. Uh, verse 9. The book of Exodus Chapter 12 and verse 9. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, mm. his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. Right. So you can't eat it raw and you can't boil it. You must not boil it. It has to be roasted with fire. We'll get into that later. This is how you're going to be able to determine when it's talking about the actual Passover and when it's talking about um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because you have, in different places, um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is being called Passover. Mm -hmm. And then you have brothers like uh, Mark will say Passover and mean um, both events. And then Matthew, it'll be separated. <laughs> and Luke, it'll be separated. Right. But then John, it'll be calling it everything Passover. See, and we're going to show you. If everybody's like stop and think and make sense of this thing, mm -hmm. we know that that was one of the um, high holy days that we had to come right. to Jerusalem. Right? right. So why would you wait to get there during the time of the feast or the day of the feast? Why not get there Passover? Right. You know what I'm saying? If you're on the end, you do the Passover in your rooms or maybe in a banquet with other brothers. And then the next night when the feast kick in, you already in Jerusalem. It just makes sense. Yep. <laughs> yep. Where we at? Um, 12 verse 10. 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 12 and 10. The book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 10. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, you shall burn with fire. Right. There can't be none left over in the morning. Verse, eight, verse 11. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, mm -hmm. your shoes on your feet, mm -hmm. and your staff in your hand. Mm -hmm. These and are ordinances. <laughs> right. These are ordinances for the Passover. Go and, ahead. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night mm -hmm. and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Right. So see the Lord saying again, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and smite the Egyptians. So this is one of them times where you're supposed to um, fear the Lord with trembling. Mm hmm. You can't go out your house. The death angel is out there putting firstborns to death. Right. Go ahead. Verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. See, so that's what it's all about. Passing over the children of Israel. This plague passing over the children of Israel. Go ahead. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. See? So we're in we're in our houses with the blood over the door. Mm -hmm. 
so that the death angel doesn't come in and put us to death. Mm. Nobody is celebrating this night. Go ahead. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Right. Passover is a memorial. And we have to do it. We have to keep it. Mm -hmm. Finish this verse out. And then we'll make a statement. And ye shall keep it. A, a, I'm sorry. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Mm -hmm. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Right. And so, like we said last year, when you get to verse 14 here, this is the end of the ordinances given for the Passover. Mm -hmm. When you start at verse 15, you go into the ordinances of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Absolutely. So, it's a memorial. The, the Passover is a memorial. There's no... Um, it's not a uh, it's not a holy convocation and it's not a Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Again, let's go back. Let's go back to Numbers 28 again. <laughs> right. Every right. single time. Verse 16. Numbers. Numbers 28 and 16. Gotcha. The book of Numbers, chapter 28 and verse 16. And in the 14th day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. See, this is the only verse dealing with Passover. And in the 14th day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. That's it. That's all it says about it. Mm -hmm. You know the ordinances of Passover from reading Exodus 12, 1 through 14. Right. But we're going we're gonna to come back here later. Definitely. <laughs> now, back to Exodus 12. And we're going to verse 21. So, the Lord gives Moses the ordinances for the Passover. Then, he gives the ordinances for Feast of Unleavened Bread. We're going to read them, but we're going to make some points first. The book of... Um, Verse 21. Yeah, verse 21. The book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. See, it says kill the Passover. We're going to read that in some other places too. There's a difference. You have, so with the Passover... Every man supposed to kill a lamb. He's supposed to kill the Passover for his house. And then the Feast of Unleavened Bread is a feast of seven days, and you have to make sacrifices. You do you sacrifice animals in them days. We don't do it anymore because we got Christ. But they had to sacrifice animals with that. We'll get into it. Though the, is the ordinances of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we'll get into it in a few minutes. Um, keep going. <clears throat> Verse 22. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. So now he's telling the children of Israel, he's telling the elders, and then they go and tell and they tell to everybody knows. All the children of Israel know. These are the things that you're going to have to do this night. You ain't supposed to come out. Go ahead. Verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, mm -hmm. the Lord will pass over the door. Pass over. Go ahead. And will not suffer the destroyer. To come in unto your houses to smite you. Boy, this is not in a game, bro. No. People, people are getting put to death, man. Nobody is celebrating on this night. And this is the 14th. It's the 14th. Go ahead. And ye shall ob observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. Right. And it shall come to pass. When ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you, 
according as he hath promised, mm -hmm. that ye shall keep this service. All right. So when you get to Israel, when you get to Jerusalem, you get to your tribal land, you still going to keep this service. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean ye? By this service. Uh, like, Father, why are we doing this? Why are you killing this lamb? And we're eating bitter herbs, and you got your staff, and we're at the table eating with haste. Can you imagine the kids eating the bitter herbs, bro? Yeah. Oh, you they are complaining. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 27. <laughs> that ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, mm -hmm. who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, mm -hmm. when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bowed the head and worshiped. Right. So they were told how to keep Passover, the feast of Passover. Go ahead. Verse 28. And the children of Israel went away and did as, as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. So where, are they, where did Moses give them the ordinances for the feast of unleavened bread? He didn't. He didn't. That was Passover. Yeah. He just gave him the ordinances for Passover because Passover is on the 14th. Right. Before you, you keep Passover, then the next night is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. The next night is all Israel coming together to leave. That's called the Holy Convocation. Mm -hmm. Everyone coming together. Go ahead. Verse 29. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. Damn, even of the animals. They got to catch it too. It belonged to them. They got to catch it. Yep. Don't get this work. <laughs> the Lord won't plan. Right. Go ahead. Verse 30. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt. Just like the Lord said. For there was not a house where there was not one dead. Right. But nobody is keeping the feast of unleavened bread. Mm. They got their lamb, their bitter herbs, mm -hmm. and they in the house. Yep. They're in the house. With the blood on the both posts yep. on the side and one above. I'm going to reiterate it. The Lord gave Moses the ordinances for Passover, and he gave him the ordinances for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He immediately goes, gives them the ordinances for Passover, mm -hmm. and they keep Passover. Now the Egyptians are dying. That's where we're at right now. Go ahead. Verse 31. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night mm -hmm. and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, <laughs> both ye and the children of Israel, and go. Serve the Lord, as ye have said. Also, take your flocks and your herds, as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. Just like the Lord said, he all together going to thrust you out. Take everything you got and get up out you. Yeah. Go ahead. Verse 33. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. Mm -hmm. For they said, we be all dead men. And the right. people took their dough before it was leavened. Ah. <laughs> so the next day, they're taking their dough before it was leavened. Go ahead. They're kneading trowels, being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. So all the next day, they gathered together, getting their stuff and getting ready to leave. Right. This, this is thousands of years before the time of Christ. If you tried to get a million and a half people to leave out of a city right now, Mm. Even with cars and everything, how mm. long would it take? Too much time. And you got instant communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All this did not happen in one day. Keep going. 
And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, mm-hmm. so that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. Mm-hmm. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. Right. So the Passover was the night before, and then... All day, they're getting all their things together to get ready to leave. So now, that was Passover. We read the ordinances, and then we read them doing what they were supposed to do. Now let's go back to 15, read the ordinances for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and then we're going to read how that played out. The book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. This is talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's not talking about Passover. Go ahead. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your house. Where did it say that the children, Moses didn't tell the children of Israel to remove the leaven out of their houses when he went and told the elders to prepare for the Passover, for everybody to get a lamb and bitter herbs and all that. He said nothing about removing the leaven out your house. Right. That's how we know that this is not the same thing. This is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Go ahead. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Go ahead. And in the first day, there shall be an holy convocation. See, a holy convocation. The holy convocation was not when we went into our own houses and ate the lamb and the bitter herbs. Right. And stayed in away from the deaf angel. Go ahead. And in the seventh day, there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, Mm -hmm. that only may be done of you. Go ahead. Verse 17. And ye shall observe the feast Feast of of unleavened unleavened bread. bread. See how how they're different? See it? See it? It's plain. It's kind of hard when you're first looking at it, but Mm -hmm. like as you read... Like, what really got me, you're reading, and like, wait a minute, he didn't say nothing about unleavened bread. Right, right. And they kept the ordinances of the Passover. Right. Then as you, after we finish reading these ordinances, we're going to go to them playing out um, after they left out. Go ahead. For in this selfsame day that I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. This is before he even did it. Mm-hmm. So the day, so you had Passover. Where we were in the houses, uh, we had to stay in the house until the sun came up, mm-hmm. and then we gathered all that next day. Then we leave out the next night, and that's why he's saying, "This self same day have I brought your armies out, out." So feast of unleavened bread is always synonymous with us being brought out, out of Egypt. Right. Go ahead. Therefore. <laughs> Shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever? See, so this is a different ordinance from Passover. See, this has the first day as a holy convocation, the last day as a holy convocation. Mm -hmm. When you read about up above about (laughs) Passover, there is no holy convocation. Right. Go ahead. Verse 18. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at even ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. So this is another scripture that causes confusion. Right. So at the end, after Passover, mm-hmm. at the end of that day, then you start the feast of unleavened bread. So in the f- in the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at, at even, even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one. Back to um, <laughs> Numbers 28. <laughs> Just like the, at first, it'll really confuse you. Then you start yeah. like, it starts processing in your spirit. Yeah, because you see the 14th day at even, you know when evening comes, it's going to be the next day. Before, yeah. You, you know. see, we were, we were taught, oh, at even, that means, you know, the next day. But every day has an even. Right. Every day has a beginning and an and end, end, and the beginning mm-hmm. and end is even. Mm-hmm. So read 16 again. The book of Numbers, chapter 28 and verse 16. 
And in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. See, the fourteenth day. We read that up in what verse six or seven? Exodus twelve, six or seven. The fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover. Mm -hmm. Now verse seventeen. Verse seventeen. And in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. See how simple that is? You never see where Passover is the 15th day. Never. I've looked. Never. Passover is always the 14th day. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is the 15th day. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some confusion because some places calls both of them Passover. We'll get to that, though, in a little bit. Now, where are we? Uh, you want to read verse 18 again? Yeah, yeah, read 18. Okay. And then we're going to read down to 20. The book of Exodus. Again, these are these are the ordinances for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. yeah. The book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 18. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month at even, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at even. See. Seven days. Shall there be no leaven found in your houses? Mm -hmm. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or be in the land. So, now I remember I had a discussion with a brother, and he was just totally confused. So, he was saying, because, you know, they think Passover and unleavened bread is on the same day. He was saying that we were teaching people to break the commandment because it's a holy convocation, it's a Sabbath. And I said, we, on that 15th day, we keep it as a Sabbath. The thing is, we know it's unleavened bread, it's not Passover. Mm -hmm. Passover is the day before. So we haven't been keeping the Passover as the way it's written in the scriptures. We haven't been keeping it on that proper day. It's the 14th. You have a full moon on the 15th, and mm -hmm. that's when you keep that feast. Exactly. Go ahead. <clears throat> Verse 20. You shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations. Shall ye eat unleavened bread? See, so that's the end of the Lord giving Moses the ordinance for Passover and the ordinance for unleavened bread. So now, we went to... Let's go to 38. Now we're going to start dealing with Moses giving the ordinances for unleavened bread to the children of Israel and watching it play out. Um, verse 38. Exodus 12 and 38. The book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 38. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, mm -hmm. even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. Out of Egypt. They baked the cakes out of Egypt after we left the next night. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For it was not leavened because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals. That's the next night. So we feasted on bread. Go ahead. Verse 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Went out from the land of Egypt. See the difference? Went out from the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Numbers 33 and See the two or three. When we went out from the land of Egypt, we weren't out of the land altogether, but we left. We left that next night. Numbers 33 and verse just three. The book of Numbers, chapter 33 and verse three. And they departed from Ramesses in the first month on the 15th day. <laughs> 15th day of the month. That's the first Feast month. of Unleavened Bread. When? Right. The 15th day. Right. Go ahead. On the morrow after the Passover, See? the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. See? 
See how simple it is? It's, it's separation, man. Yep. It's two different days. 14? Yep. We 15. went out the next night. We right. left out. Right. Now, ver- now Exodus 12 and 42. <laughs> the book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 42. It is a night. A what? It is a night to be much observed. A night to be much observed. So it's the next night. The next night is the holy convocation. We're having a feast, and it's we're leaving Egypt. Mm-hmm. It's the perfect time to celebrate. You're not celebrating when the deaf angel is coming through. Right. I'm sorry. I'm not taking shots at nobody, but it's it's plain and simple. We're not. And, we just got to come to that understanding. You know what? You know what else we didn't mention? Mm. The fact that it's not in Jerusalem. It's where the Lord said to be. Mm-hmm. It's not in Jerusalem. Yeah, that hadn't even come yet. Mm-hmm. We want to touch on that too. We got to. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Verse forty-two. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for the for bringing them out. From the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed to all the children of Israel in their generations. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron. Yeah, you good. Okay. So now it's going into who can eat the Passover. Mm -hmm. So we left out that next night. Uh, Verse 51. The book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 51. And it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Right. Now, 13 and 1, because 13 goes into some of these um, uh, ordinances too. Mm -hmm. The book of Exodus, chapter 13 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast. It is mine. Mm, And Moses said unto the people, Remember this This day day. in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. For by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. See? So these things are always going to go together. Us coming out and no leaven. Having Mm -hmm. no leaven. No leaven for seven days. Go ahead. This day came ye out in the month of Bib. See? So you got the Passover, which is all to itself. And then you got the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And it's always synonymous with coming out. And it's going to be synonymous with the month of Abib too. Watch as we go forward. Um, go to verse 6. Verse 6. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. So what's happening now? Oh, uh, that looked like the closeout. Well, he's given them the ordinances for unleavened bread, but we read it in chapter 12 and verse 15 to verse 20. Right. We read those ordinances, but Moses is just giving this to them after they have left out. Mm. Egypt. Go ahead. Verse 7. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. See, he's giving them the ordinances. It's so I mean it's it take time, but you can I can see it plainly. Mm-hmm. This you have one day and it's ordinances, and then you have another the next day with its ordinances that last for a whole week. Yep. And got two holy convocations in it. The beginning and the end. Yep. Go ahead. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. See? <laughs> you Back in chapter 12, you telling your son right. that... um. The Lord passed over the children of Israel and smote the Egyptians. Now you're telling your son, this is talking about us coming out of Egypt, us keeping unleavened bread. 
Go ahead. Verse 9. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand, and for a memorial between thine eyes, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. Mm. For with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Now jump down to 14. The book of Exodus, chapter 13 and verse 14. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him? Mm -hmm. By strength of hand, the Lord brought us out from Egypt. Brought us out from Egypt. Go ahead. From the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all that openeth the matrix, being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. And it shall be for a token upon thine hand and for frontlets between thine eyes. For by strength of hand, the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. Right, the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. So, you see, you, 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 you see the separation. You have Passover, where you're supposed to have that lamb for a house. You're supposed to kill the Passover. You're supposed to roast it with fire and with bitter herbs. You're supposed to have your staff, mm -hmm. you know. So you got those ordinances, and that's a memorial. Then you have the next night, is the holy convocation. You can't have no leaven in your houses and you keep it a feast seven days. Did you want to ask something? Oh, at the end of that. Oh, okay. And you have it for seven days. Mm -hmm. Now, so now let's go to uh, Leviticus 23. Gotcha. Oh, no, before we go to Leviticus 23, let's go to Numbers 9. Numbers 9 to this ordinance. Start at verse 2. Mm -hmm. The book of Numbers, chapter 9 and verse 2. Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. In the 14th day of this month, at even... Ye shall keep it in his appointed season, mm -hmm. according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof, shall ye keep it. See, so you're supposed to keep it according to his ordinances. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And this is the 14th day. Verse 4. And it says, at even, don't let that confuse you, because at even begins the day and it ends the day. Mm -hmm. This is talking about the beginning. Go ahead. Verse 4. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel. That they should keep the Passover. Mm -hmm. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month at even in the wilderness of Sinai. So notice it says nothing about a 15th day. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. Now jump down to um, verse 10. All right. So because this is going into if somebody misses the first one. The book of Numbers, chapter 9 and verse 10. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you, of your posterity, shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. The fourteenth day of the second month at even, they shall keep it, and eat it with, un with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Mm -hmm. They shall... Leave. Hold on, was unleavened bread and bitter herbs is ordinances for what? Passover. Yeah, Passover. Go ahead. They shall leave none of it unto the morning, nor break any bone of it. According to all the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep it. See, this has nothing to do with unleavened bread. Right. Go ahead. Verse 13. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey. And forbear to keep the Passover. See, this it says forbear, meaning he don't want to keep the Passover. Mm. It, it ain't like it's you know, it, it's not like it's some kind of uh, difficulty or somebody obstructing him from keeping it. Right. He don't want to keep it. He's right. forbearing. Go ahead. 
even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season. That man shall bear Bears his sin. His sin. And if a stranger shall, shall sojourn among you and will keep the Passover unto the Lord, according to the ordinance of the Passover and according to the manner thereof, so shall he do. Ye shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger and for him that was born in the land. Right. So you don't see nothing about them keeping the feast for seven days. Mm -hmm. This was strictly if you missed the Passover. And it gave you the ordinances. There was no feast of unleavened bread. See, and it's for, again, just like other places we're going to show you, 14th day of the month. Mm -hmm. Now, Leviticus 23. Mm, we'll start at four. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, and verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the first month, at even, is the Lord's Passover. See, just like in Numbers 28, one verse, you go back to Exodus 12, for the ordinances of the Passover. One verse. The 14th day. Go ahead. Verse 6. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread. So unto that? the Lord. Three times now we done read that? Mm -hmm. The 15th day is the feast of unleavened bread. The 14th is when you keep the Passover. Go ahead. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. See? So now he's giving you again the ordinances that go with the feast of unleavened bread. So you see why Monday night we're keeping a Passover in our houses. Tuesday night we're meeting together and we're going to have a good old time. Lord's will. Go ahead. Verse 8. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. Mm. And the seventh day is in holy convocation. So you're going to make an offering by fire. So this is, who does the offerings by fire? Oh. Every man got to kill the Passover, right? Right. right. Who does the offerings by fire? The priest. The priesthood. The priesthood. Mm-hmm. Now watch how this watch how this um second chronicles six and six. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter six and verse six. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there, mm -hmm. and have chosen David. To be over my people Israel. Right. So what was put in Jerusalem? The house of the Lord. The temple. Mm -hmm. The temple. Remember that. It's gonna be, that's going to be important. So the, and who did the offerings and the sacrifices? The priesthood. The Levitical priesthood. Um, yeah, read it again. And then we're going to jump. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 8. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. Mm -hmm. And the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. Okay, you're good. You're okay. good. So those are the ordinances for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now back to Numbers 28. And we're going to start at, was it 14 again? No, 16 again. See, so so it's important. I mean, you must read through the law, statutes, and commandments to understand everything that's going on, or it will elude you. Now, watch. Um, give me verse... Two. Now, give me verse 1 and 2 so I can show y'all what's going on. 
Hold on, man, a long book. 28, verse 1. Yeah, 28, 1 and 2 first. The book of Numbers, chapter 28 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire, for a sweet savour unto me, shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. See, so, this, so he's going into the offerings and sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Now, again... Let's start at verse 16. The book of Numbers, chapter 28 and verse 16. And in the 14th day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in the 15th day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. Right. So remember we read in Numbers, Leviticus 23, sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So the sacrifices go along with the feast of unleavened bread. Go ahead. Verse 18. In the first day shall be an holy convocation. You shall do no manner of several work therein, but you shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord, mm. two young bullocks and one ram, and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish. See that? You don't do that with the Passover. <laughs> Not at all. Now, we're going to go somewhere where... The Feast of Unleavened Bread is being called Passover. Mm -hmm. So these offerings right here, you see that you got to make these sacrifices. That's what's going to illuminate you in your mind. Like, wait a minute. This is talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This ain't talking about Passover when you got to get your lamb and bitter herbs. Um, keep going. Verse 19. But ye shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil. Three tenths deals shall ye offer for a bullock and two tenths deals for a ram. A several tenth deal shall thou offer for every lamb. So, see, you get the picture. Um, verse 24 says, After this manner ye shall offer daily throughout the seven days. So they're at everybody's at Jerusalem for the seven days having this giant, this great feast. Mm. And this is one time where you have to come to Jerusalem. Speaking mm -hmm. of which, <clears throat> speaking of which, Deuteronomy 16. Mm -hmm. this, this joint right here will send you for a loop. Everything that we've gone over, you need to remember it right now while we're going over this right here. <laughs> Where you want to start? Verse 1. Gotcha. This is very interesting. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 1. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. Notice it said the month of Abib. What is the month of Abib synonymous with? The first. Us coming out of Egypt. Yep. Yep. Us leaving Egypt. The feast of Passover. When you see Abib, <laughs> you think about that. Go ahead. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. See, out of Egypt. Passover was kept in Egypt, in our houses. Go ahead. Verse 2. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Hold on. Contradictory. Contradictory. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover. Who does the sacrifices? We said before the priest, the Levitical, yeah, yeah. Levitical priests, mm -hmm. they do the sacrifices. So your ears, the hairs on your head should be standing up. Like, hold up, wait, 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 wait. Something seemed kind of off, but it said Passover. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith. 
even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt. Huh? For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt. Every <laughs> Everything lines up with Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. Go ahead. <clears throat> In haste that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. See, we came forth out of the land of Egypt on the morrow after the Passover. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. It's calling the Feast of Unleavened Bread Passover right here. Right. And you're going to see that same thing in the New Testament. That's why people are confused, but they don't understand the ordinances that go with everything. Go ahead. Verse 4. And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days. See, seven days. Right. Go ahead. Neither shall there anything of the flesh which thou sacrificed the first day at even remain all night until the morning. Mm -hmm. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Hold up. You see that? Yeah. You see that? Yeah. The Passover you're supposed to do within your In gates. your house. Right. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, you're supposed to go to Jerusalem right. and keep it. Right. Go ahead. I'm glad you picked up on Verse that. Verse 6. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose mm -hmm. to place his name in, there thou shalt sacrifice, sacrifice the Passover. Sacrifice the Passover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At even, at the going down of the sun, at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. We read all of this right. in it's, Exodus. Right. You, this, this is all dealing with the Feast, feast of, of Unleavened Bread. bread. Right, because you kill the Passover. You don't yes, sacrifice you it. you kill the Passover. Right. They do sacrifices. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 7. And thou shalt roast and eat it in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt turn in the morning and go into, <laughs> into thy tents. Hold up. Yeah, hold up. Wow. So thou shalt roast. Now, I didn't do it this time, but last time, last year we did it. That word roast right there means to seethe. It means to boil. The Passover lamb, you, you must not right. boil it or eat it raw. Right. You have to roast it with fire. fire. This is talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. Again. And we're going to prove it. Keep going. Verse 8. Oh, hold on. And then it said, in the morning, you go in your tents. You're supposed to party all night and then go home. Whereas the Passover, you stay in the house because the death angel coming at midnight. Right. You see? Ordinances. Understand these ordinances. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 8. Six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work therein. That's the Feast of Unleavened, unleavened Bread. bread. Yep. Now, we're going to read one more verse in this chapter, and it's going to prove what we're saying. Mm. Verse 16. <laughs> the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16 and verse 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God mm -hmm. in the place of which he shall choose. See, you can't keep the Passover anywhere else but the place where he he going to choose. That's right. what it said earlier. Go ahead. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Why doesn't it say Passover? In the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's what it's talking about. The right. Feast of Unleavened Bread. And it'll confuse you. It will 100% confuse you <laughs> if you don't understand the ordinances. Right. The, the, the sub laws that go with each thing. Go ahead. And in the Feast of Weeks and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. But it don't say Passover. And no. this is the same chapter where it keeps calling unleavened bread Passover. Passover. But you understand it's not really the Passover. <clears throat> now, oh. Oh, yeah, do, do try this. Let's go to Joshua real quick. Okay. I would have forgotten that one if I didn't write that down. Joshua chapter 5. And give me verse 10 and 11. The book of Joshua, chapter 5 and verse 10. 
and the children of Israel encamped in Gigal and, ke and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at even in the plains of Jericho. Right. So on the 14th day, they kept the Passover, mm -hmm. just like it's, it's commanded. Go ahead. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, Passover unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. Unleavened cakes. What did that verse say? The opening verse it says sweet bread. Right. Cakes. Mm -hmm. Unleavened cakes. Unleavened cakes. After the Passover. <laughs> All right. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter thirty. Man, I think that's what I want. Yep. Yep. We're gonna go to Chronicles, and then we're gonna go to the one of the prophets. Where you want to start at? Start a verse. Give me verse one, then we're gonna jump. Mm -hmm. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter thirty, starting at verse one. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem <laughs> to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. And jump down to verse 5. Verse 5. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel for Beersheba, even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem. For they had not done it of a long time in such sort as it was written now verse 9 the book of second chronicles chapter 30 and verse 9 for if ye turn again unto the lord your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that led them captive so that they shall come again into this land for the lord your god is gracious and merciful mm. and will not turn away his face from you if ye return unto him right if you return unto him now Verse 13. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter 30 and verse 13. And there assembled at Jerusalem much people to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread in the second month, a very great congregation. <laughs> right, to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread because you're ordered to come to Jerusalem. Now, we're in captivity now. We're doing the best we can. We're doing what we can. And it's, Jerusalem is trodden down to the Gentiles. So, um, now watch. Pay attention, y'all. Because remember we said, and I asked Joab the question. He said, you kill the Passover. You don't sacrifice it. Right. Uh, go to, uh, you finish 13? Mm -hmm. Go to 15. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter, 13, th chapter 30, verse 15. Then they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the second month. And the priests and the Levites were ashamed and sanctified themselves and brought in the burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. Now, again, the 14th day, mm -hmm. the Passover itself, they killed the Passover on the 14th day, meaning they held the Passover on the 14th day. Go ahead. Verse 16. And they stood in their place. After their manner, according to the law of Moses, the man of God, the priests sprinkled the blood, which they received at the hand of the Levites. For there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Levites had the charge of the killing of the Passover. So because of the uncleanliness of the children of mm -hmm. Israel, the priests did the killing of the Passover for them. Go ahead. For everyone that was not clean to sanctify them unto the Lord. See? See? Nice. So the Levites killed the Passover for, for them. them. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar and Zebulon, had not cleansed themselves. Yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it was written. But Hezekiah's Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, The good Lord pardon every one. See? Nice. Right. For brethren, man. Yep. Now, 
Verse 21. Now, that's the spirit of Christ. Yes. Yes. Verse 21. And the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days with great gladness. See? So they kept the The priests did the killing of the Passover for them. Then afterwards, they kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread <laughs> seven days. Go ahead. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. And Hezekiah spake comfortably unto all the Levites that taught the good knowledge of the Lord. And they did eat throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings and making confession to the Lord of their fathers. All praise to the Most High. To the Lord God of their fathers. So, but this isn't the only one. Let's go to um, uh, let's go to chapter thirty-five. Mm -hmm. Josiah. Chapter thirty-five, verse one. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter thirty-five, and verse one. Moreover, Josiah kept a Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem. And they killed the Passover on the 14th day at the first month of the first month. The 14th day. is You, you can't get around it. Mm -hmm. Passover is the 14th day. Feast of Unleavened Bread 15th. is the 15th day. Um, pick back up at verse 9. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter 35, and verse 9. <clears throat> Corn. Oh, man, you're going to hit me with one of these, you know what I'm saying? Corniah also, and Shemaiah, mm -hmm. and Nathaniel, mm -hmm. for brethren, and Hash Hashabiah, Hashabiah, I'm sorry, and Jael, and um, Jusabat, <laughs> chief of the Levites, gave unto the Levites for Passover offerings, 5,000 small cattle, and 500 oxen. Go ahead. So the service was prepared, and the priests stood in their place, and the Levites in their courses, according to the king's commandment. Mm -hmm. And they killed the Passover, and the priests sprinkled the blood from their hands, and the Levites flayed them. Mm -hmm. And they removed the burnt offerings, that they might give according to the divisions of the families of the people. So you have daily offerings that the priests are supposed to give. You always had to have something on the fire. You had to have a lamb constantly. And then you had all these other daily offerings. So they're doing this, but watch what happens. To offer unto the Lord, as it is written in the book of Moses. And so did they with the oxen. And they roasted the Passover with fire according to the ordinance. But the other holy offerings sod they in pots. So knowing that the, the lamb has to be with fire, mm -hmm. they separated them. They took them other things and they sod them in pots and put the lamb on and roasted them in fire. Go ahead. And in cauldrons and in pans and divided them speedily among all the people. Mm. And afterward, they made ready for themselves and for the priests. Because the priests, the sons of Aaron, were busied in the offering of burnt offerings and the fat until night. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Levites prepared for themselves and for the priests, the sons of Aaron. Well, again, like you said, that's the spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. They're doing everything for each other. Now, give me verse, um, just give me verse 17. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter 35 and verse 17. And the children of Israel that were present kept the Passover at that time and the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days. See, it's the same event that we read in First Ezra 1 and 19. It's the same event. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, now, let's go to First Ezra 7. To the law to the testimony. Oh, verse 9. The book of First Ezra, chapter 7, and verse 9. 
The priests also and the Levites stood arrayed in their vestments, according to their kindreds in the service of the Lord God of Israel, mm -hmm. according to the book of Moses and the porters at every gate. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel that were of the captivity held the Passover the 14th day of the first month. After that, the priests and the Levites were sanctified. Go ahead. They that were of the captivity were not all sanctified together, but the Levites were all sanctified together. That's why they're doing the service for them. Go ahead. And so they offered the Passover for all them of the captivity and for their brethren, the priests, and for themselves. And the children of Israel that came out of the captivity did eat, even all they that had separated themselves from the abominations of of the people of the land and sought the Lord. So they kept the Passover on the 14th day. Go ahead. And they kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days, making merry before the Lord. Making <laughs> merry before the Lord. Right. Whereas the Passover, you're tucked in away from the danger. Mm -hmm. um, won't, no, won't no merry. Right. No, he was in fear. <laughs> Um, now verse, now go to, uh, let's go to first Ezra's, mm -hmm. I mean, Ezra, Ezra six. Oh, gotcha. Mm, excuse me. Verse. <laughs> 18 the book of Ezra chapter 6 and verse 18 and they set the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for the service of God which is at Jerusalem as it is written in the book of Moses and the children of the captivity kept the Passover Upon the 14th day of the first month, for the priests and the Levites were purified together. All of them were pure and killed the Passover for all the children of the captivity and for their brethren, the priests and for themselves. And the children of Israel, which were come again out of captivity and all such as had separated themselves unto them. For the filthiness of the heathen of the land mm -hmm. to seek the Lord God of Israel did eat. Yep, they did eat. They, they sought the Lord God of Israel mm -hmm. and they did eat. Go ahead. And kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy. Man, we don't even have to say it no more. It's just too, it's too evident. Right. You know, it, I, I don't know why anybody would not want to see it. This is not some strange doctrine. I mean, this is as it is written. Right. You know, I know for many years, I didn't look into the feast days. I just didn't do it. Right. I didn't do it. I relied on other brothers. But the time came, and the Lord's like, open your eyes and see. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, finish that joint out. For the Lord had made them joyful. Joyful. And turn the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Right. The God of Israel. <clears throat> so you got two separate days. There's mm -hmm. no way around that. Right. Um, now, let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 5 real quick. We're going to just touch on a couple things dealing with Christ. And then we're going to go into... You know, seeing the Passover play out in the New Testament, we're going to go to the different accounts. And, you know, really the only way you can explain it is to have the understanding that we have of two different days. Mm -hmm. um, you in Matthew 5, 15. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So the house is Israel. Yep. And that light yeah, is, is 
our king, our husband, the Christ. Mm -hmm. He's the lamb of the house of Israel. That's the title, man. Yeah. Well, a lamb for a house. But he is the lamb of the house of Israel. Um, you can read the next verse. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Uh, John 1 and 29. The book of St. John, chapter 1 and verse 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Man, it don't, <laughs> it don't get no better than that. Since I'm thinking about it, man, uh, John 15, 14, man. Right. The book of St. John, chapter 15, and verse 14. Ye are my friends. If hold ye... On, I'm, sorry. On, I'm sorry. I'm mm sorry. -hmm. Let's start at verse 10. Let's start at verse 10. Okay. The book of St. John, chapter 15, and verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. All right, them same commandments that mm -hmm. come from the Father and they trickle down to us. Go ahead. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Mm. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. As, as I have loved you. Right. Christ did not break a single commandment. As I have loved you, right? Didn't break a commandment, mm -mm. but let's add more to it. Go ahead. Verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Right. True brotherly love. This is what the Pharisees lacked. Right. The teachers of Israel, this is what they lacked. They selling each other out. Right. Look at Judas. Hmm. Go ahead. Verse 14. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Right. Your friends, your friends are Christ, and he'll do anything for you if you're obedient. Mm -hmm. If you're obedient. All right. Um, you can drop that. Okay. You can drop that. So... Christ is the Lamb of God. Christ is the Lamb for the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Like each man is the Lamb of his house. Of his own house. The, the, the flock of God. Mm. Men. So, <clears throat> let's go to Matthew 26. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to Matthew 26, and we're going to get into like, The end of Christ. Let's start at... We're going to jump a little bit, though. Start at 1. <clears throat> the book of St. Matthew, chapter 26 and verse 1. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days in the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. See, so it's saying... The feast of the Passover. After two days, the feast of the Passover. Go ahead. No, Wait. jump down to. Um, no, keep going. Keep going. Verse three. Verse three. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people mm -hmm. unto the place. I'm sorry. Unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, Caiaphas and consulted that they might take Jesus but subtly and kill him. Right. So they want to kill Christ. Go ahead. Right. Kill the lamb of yep. God. Yeah. Verse five. But they said not on the feast day. So what's the feast day? y'all? The feast of unleavened bread. Yeah. The feast day is the feast of unleavened bread. 
That's the holy convocation where everybody's supposed to be at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That's that. Three times a year, you're supposed to be at Jerusalem. Being merry, cel being mm -hmm. celebratory. Nobody want to see no killing. No, right. Now, so it called it, where is it, verse 1? No, verse 2. He, Christ said the feast of, after two days is the feast of Passover. Now, jump down to verse 17. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 26 and verse 17. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? See how this can be confusion? Mm-hmm. Because it's saying the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. But you have the Passover before the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. That's what it's talking about. That's why you see Christ called it Passover. He said Passover. Mm-hmm. Um... So it says, where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? See how it's, it's said the first day of unleavened bread, but then it said, where wilt, the, <laughs> where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? So where? But you're supposed to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread at the temple, at mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 18. And he said, go into the city to such a man. And say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. Mm -hmm. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Wait a minute. You ain't supposed to keep the Passover at none of your gates. Right. See how it can be confusing? But they're going to keep the Passover at this brother's house. I don't know if they rent the room or he let them get the room or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're doing this in a house. They're keeping the, <laughs> the memorial of Passover in this house. Go ahead. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them. And they made ready the Passover. They made ready the Passover. They prepared for the Passover. They got everything they needed for the Passover. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Now, when the even was come, mm -hmm. he sat down with the twelve. Right. And as they did eat, what? And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. So he kept the Passover with his disciples in, a, in some brother's house. Right, in the house. Right. Ain't like he in the out, house. He, he didn't go out and rent a, rent a uh, space at a park. Right. Remember, we read in Deuteronomy 16, you're going to keep the. The um we was talking about unleavened bread, mm -hmm. and you're gonna turn and go in your house in the morning. Right. Right. Okay. Keep going. Verse twenty two. <clears throat> and they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Mm. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Damn. When Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. Thou hast said. Damn. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus... As they were eating, what do you think they're eating? They're eating the lamb and bitter, bitter herbs. herbs. So Another as they bread. were eating, right. Jesus... Go ahead. Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Mm. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Yeah, because he knew it was it was his time. Mm -hmm. It was the, the, the Passover had finally come. Go ahead. Verse 30. And when they had sung him, sung in him. They went out into the Mount of Olives. Then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. Mm. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, 
and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Shall be scattered abroad. Mm. Go ahead. But after I am raised, I am risen again. I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Then cometh Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. Let me let me relieve you for a little bit. <clears throat> Verse uh, 37. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. My God, we got to have this same spirit, man. Mm -hmm. Although you don't want to go through it, it's like, here I am, Lord. Mm. Uh, verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. done. Yo, the Lord went through this for us, right. for us, and he read the prophecies of what was going to happen to him. Um, verse 43 and he came and found them asleep again for their eyes were heavy and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time saying the same words then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them sleep on now and take your rest behold the hour is at hand and the son of man is betrayed unto the hands of sinners Verse 4 to 6, rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doeth betray me. Verse 4 to 7, and while he yet spake to Judas, one of the twelve came, and with him a great multitude, oh, I read that wrong, and while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, mm -hmm. came, and with him a great multitude, with swords and staves for the chief priests and elders from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign saying, whomsoever I shall kiss, mm -hmm. that same is he, hold him fast. Showing you, Damn. he didn't try to be like a, up and above everybody. He came to do his father's will. Verse 49. Oh no. Oh, I didn't finish. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he. Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Then Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore out thou art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. That was Peter. Bro. 
Christ still call this man friend. Man, yeah. walk with him, he talk with him, he taught him. Christ still called him friend. Well, he ate with him, man. That's crazy. Damn. Let's go to um Let's go to John 12. So when you look at, I like to look at Christ's mannerisms and how he dealt. Mm -hmm. This is how we're supposed to deal. Right. This is how we're supposed to deal with people. Um, <clears throat> mm, it's just like Matthew 26. I want to go to verse... Give me Yeah, it's the same account, maybe Pick back up, um, start at, um Verse 28, John 12 and 28. The book of St. John, chapter 12 and verse 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Mm -hmm. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying with death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus saith unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Mm -hmm. Walk while ye have the light, mm -hmm. lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Right, you ain't got no instruction. Go ahead. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed, and did hide himself from them. But thou, but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Damn. That the saying of Isaiah, as the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed. So Isaiah 53, I believe. Therefore, they could not believe because that Isaiah said again, at, yeah, Isaiah said again, he had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him. Mm -hmm. But because of the Pharisees, did they not confess him, Damn. lest they should be put out of the synagogue. See that? Many of them right. believed. But yeah. your people tell us that their Jews didn't believe on him. Right. Those were but those many believed, believed but they was afraid. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For they loved the praise of men more than the, the praise, praise of, of God. God. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. On him that you sent me. Christ never took, took credit. That. He never. Never. He knew who, was, who sent him. Because he doing the Father's will. Right. Go ahead. And he that seeth me 
seeth him that sent me. You see the Father in Christ. If you're watching this, you see the Father in Christ. That's why we say most high in Christ. Right. You see him. And they don't see, you see the problem with a lot of cats that stay in the New Testament or New Testament only cats, they don't see the mercy that the Lord did give in the Old Testament. He gave mercy, bro. Throughout. Right. Throughout. So he had to send basically mercy to you in the flesh so you can see the mercy that he was that he had for you in the Old Testament. Um, Exodus 34. Seven, I think. Same thing is is. Just give me verse seven. <laughs> thirty-four and seven. Mm -hmm. The book of Exodus, chapter thirty-four and verse seven. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions, and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children, upon the third and to the fourth, unto the third and the, to the fourth generation. We have always had grace and mercy. Always. Always. The Lord is trying to gather us together. When you see the Lord destroy somebody, at that point in time, they deserved it. You ain't joking. Yeah, at that point in time, they deserved it. Sure. I mean, hey, the, jo the Lord is not unrighteous. Right. He's not a respecter of persons when it comes to judgment. Um, back to John 12. Where do we stop? Um, give me, let's pick back up at 4 to 6. Mm -hmm. The book of St. John, chapter 12 and verse 46. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Mm -hmm. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words have one, hath one that judgeth him. <sighs> the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. See that? In the last day. Mm -hmm. So, so... You don't know when your last day going to be or when that day is going to be because you can be cut off from the earth right. and don't have a chance to do no more good works. So you got to walk circumspect, man. You got to walk in the law the way Christ did with love for one another. If you can't see that we need to have love for each other, then I don't know what you're looking at. We've been underneath the thumb of Esau so long that we think his wicked ways are virtuous. They're not. Hmm. They're, you can't be any further from Christ than the way the Edomites behave themselves. And we've learned that from them. That's why it's something I say all the time. And a brother said the same thing to me this morning. I've been saying it. We got a long damn ways to go. You got to look at where we're at and where we need to be. We need to right. be like Christ. Right. But we're so used, when you turn on the daggone TV, all you see is negativity, evil, wickedness. Yep. That's all you see. Yep. If it's not Esau, it's us. Right. That's crazy. It's us. People in other places look at us with astonishment. Yep. Like, what the hell's wrong with those folks? Go ahead. <clears throat> the book of St. John, chapter 12 and verse 49. For I... Have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. Mm. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. First off, Deuteronomy 18. Oh. See, he's going to speak my words. Then, like we always read in Ezekiel, son of man, I have set thee a watchman for Israel. Right. Christ. That's why Christ keeps saying, "Who I, the son of man. We understand that God told us. Um, hear Christ but Christ is not telling us anything different than what God told him right it's nothing different so you can call it the law of Moses you can call it the law of Christ all you want to those laws came from God right simply and plain now keep going keep going <clears throat> you alright allergies okay okay 
we were on ver- verse 50? Verse yeah, 49? yeah. All right. The book of St. John, chapter 12 and verse 50. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Damn. Go ahead. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, me so, so I speak. speak. Like this man just, just told said. you. That ain't his words, man. Lord Christ, hear him. Yeah, you're going to hear exactly what Christ learned from the Father. Remember what he said just a few verses ago. He said, if you see me, you see the Father. Right. Come on, man. Um, Chapter 13, verse 1. The book of St. John, chapter 13, and verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. So is that really Passover right there? No. It said before the feast of Passover. Mm -hmm. They're in the feast of Passover. They're literally in it. And they're having the Passover feast, that the Passover meal right here. Verse 2. Verse 2. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. See? So this is after the supper. This is what in Luke he said, the last supper. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Verse 3. <clears throat> Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he has come from God and went to God. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself and that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples feet (sighs) and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded then cometh he to simon peter and peter said unto him lord dost thou wash my feet jesus answered and said unto him what i do thou knowest not now but thou shalt know hereafter. Why? Because uh, Exodus 30. See, brother, the law was to lead us to Christ. Hmm. You just have no idea. Exodus 30, verse He <laughs> said the law is 18. to lead us to Christ, and Christ is leading us with the law. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Said 30 and 19. 18. 18. The book of Exodus, chapter 30 and verse 18. Thou shalt also make a labor of brass Mm -hmm. and his foot also of brass. Christ is the labor of brass. He is that water that washes us. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) Now, that was an example. And then here you go, got Christ washing your feet for real. Yes. Watch what he say. <laughs> Read this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Verse 18. Thou shalt also make a labor of brass and his foot also of brass to wash withal. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. And thou shalt put water therein. Christ is your mediator between. He's our mediator to the most high. Right. He's that water and labor of brass. Christ washing you. Right. Washing all the, the dirt and the sins and all that out of way. <laughs> Verse 21. <laughs> Verse 21. So they shall wash their hands and their feet that they die not. And it shall be a statue forever to them. Even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. Now back to John 13. Mm, 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 mm. Verse 8. The book of St. John, chapter 13 and verse 8. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Yo, he got to wash you. <laughs> Go ahead. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only. But also my hands and my head. Go ahead, Peter. He wants his hands and feet that's and the head. That's how you're supposed to ask, right? There. Right, right. <laughs> Verse ten. Jesus saith unto saith to him, He that is washed neither not saved to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, 
But not all. But not all because of Judas. Mm. Go ahead. For he knew who should betray him. Mm -hmm. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me master and Lord, and ye, shall, and, and ye say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Damn. Yeah, we got to be there for each other. Bear each other's burdens. Yep. Yeah. Now, jump down to 26. So now we're getting ready to get back into Passover and Unleavened Bread. And some little intricate stuff. But, uh, so pay attention. Pay attention because we said some stuff like the Passover itself is not a holy convocation. It's not a Sabbath. Right. So watch what happens. Because, you know, you can't buy and sell on a Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, verse 26. The book of St. John, chapter 13, and verse 26. Gen, uh, Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he have dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, mm. the son of Simon. Mm -hmm. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. S Satan entered into um, Judas. Then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest, do quickly. Right. Do it quickly. Go ahead. Now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. Mm -hmm. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag. He had the bag. He had the money, right? <laughs> that Jesus has said unto him, by those things, what? by those things that we have need of against the feast. What feast? Mm. First of all, buy. Right. So Passover well, is not a Sabbath. Sabbath. Right. Yeah. It's Passover. We're and then, buy. and he said, for the feast. Right. So is the Lord lying? Is he contradicting? Like, what's going on? Nope. Hmm. Uh, in need of against the feast. So hmm. the feast, the feast of unleavened bread hadn't happened. Right. And Christ Christ doesn't get to see the feast. Christ has to be buried before the Feast of right. Unleavened Bread. Right. Let's go to, we're going to jump to. And then you you know what I just noticed too? You can tell that that's a thing. That's a theme of Israel they wanted to do before the feast kicked in. Because Christ wasn't up there by himself. No. He was up there amongst others. Yeah. So that was a thing that they, they made sure they did before the feast kicked in. No. So we just read in 13. Mm -hmm. they, that was the Passover night. Let's go to chapter 19. I don't want to be. How long have we been on? 210? Okay. Let's go to... <clears throat> chapter 9, John 19 and 12. Okay. The book of St. John, chapter 19 and verse 12. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, if thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Hold on. I, I, I forgot something. Mm -hmm. Back up to chapter 18. Now it's raining. Mm -hmm. Chapter 18 and verse 39. So <clears throat> we have what is called uh, in Leviticus 16, you have the scapegoat. Yep. And that is referring to Christ. So Christ gets put to death and Israel goes out into the wilderness. So he's a scapegoat on Passover and in 70 AD all Israel is cast out. Going into the wilderness. <clears throat> so read verse 39. <clears throat> the book of St. John chapter 18 and verse 39. But ye have a custom 
that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Right, so Barabbas got to go, and Christ was the scapegoat. And see, I just said that. that that's, you could tell that that was a thing. Like you yeah. said, that's a, it's a custom. So yeah, during that that's time, the Passover. Yeah, so during that time, they're trying to kill off all, you know, I guess all the unrighteous. Right, this is before the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Exactly. They doing this on the pa you let one you kill one you let right. the other one go and this is before Passover. When you look at it, they're getting rid of the eleven. <laughs> but, they, but they had it wrong by Christ. Right. They said crucify him. Right. Um. What was we twelve? Yeah. Yeah, twelve. Nineteen twelve. Yeah. The Book of Saint John, chapter nineteen. And verse 12. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Mm. Christ, Christ did not go around saying he was daggone king of the Jews, man. Not at all. Accusation. Go ahead. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth. And sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pave the pavement, mm -hmm. but in the Hebrew, Gabatha, Gabatha, and it was the preparation of the Passover. What? And it was the preparation of the Passover. Good. But they had, they had the Passover, and Christ was betrayed, and he was taken. Now he's on the judgment seat. And you got the scapegoat, mm. but it says it was the preparation of the Passover. So, see, if you don't understand that in the Old Testament that you got it being everything being called the Passover mm -hmm. or the Feast of Unleavened Bread being called the Passover, mm -hmm. you will be confused. But we're going through a whole lot of stuff, so nobody can say, no, nah, that ain't right. It's, it's being explained. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 14, and it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, behold, your king. But they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Damn. Mm -hmm. Pilate said unto them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. Damn. Dang, man. But Caesar. Verse 16, then delivered he him, therefore, unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. Mm. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull. How are you going to bear a cross if you ain't got to do nothing? What would your cross be? Right. Go ahead. Which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. Golgotha. Yeah. Verse 18, where they crucified him and two other with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. See, oh, so wow. now remember, so now remember. In the midst. Yeah. Wow. In the midst. <laughs> now remember, um, they said not on the feast day. Mm -hmm. Let's not kill him on the feast day because it will cause an uproar. Go ahead. <clears throat> Verse 19. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews. For the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. Jump to 23. Verse 23. It won't be too long. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts. To every soldier a part. And also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it. Mm -hmm. Whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Go which saith, they parted my raiment among them and for my vesture 
they did cast lots. Jump down to 29. Verse 29. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. Another prophecy. Go ahead. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is, it finished. is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The Jews therefore, be because it was the, the preparation, preparation. The preparation of what? Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because see, people said that they were, it's, there's preparation for the <laughs> weekly Sabbath. Mm -mm. No, Christ rose on the weekly Sabbath, mm -hmm. at the end of the weekly Sabbath. Right. So it's not the preparation of the weekly Sabbath. It's the preparation for the Feast of Un Unleavened Bread. Bread. Exactly. The Holy Convocation. Go ahead. That the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. For that Sabbath day was in high day. That's the, gonna, there you go right yeah. now. That Sabbath day was in high day. Right. A high day is one of those three days that you go to Jerusalem before the Lord. So Christ is crucified the day before. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <clears throat> he sought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs jump, of the first. Jump to 36. Verse 36. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. See, it should be fulfilled. <laughs> Go ahead. A bone of him shall not be broken. Exodus. <laughs> Go ahead. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Zechariah. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night. And brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about an hundred pounds weight. Mm. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Right. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews... Preparation, Preparation day, day. Mm -hmm. for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. So they had to get him down and had to have him buried before that high holy day came in, right. which was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Let me see. Take a pick, Mark or Luke. Let's go Luke. Okay, Luke 22. Luke 22 and 1. The book of St. Luke, chapter 22 and verse 1. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests <laughs> and scribes sought how no, they you, might kill him. You skip down. Let's, for, mm -hmm. for time's sake, let's go to um, jump down to 10. Okay. The book of St. Luke. Chapter 22. Well, hit, hit seven first. And verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. Passover must be killed. Passover is killed and eaten on the 14th. Feast of unleavened bread starts on the 15th. Right. Um, eight. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. Okay, now jump to 11. Verse 11. And ye shall say unto the goodman of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber? Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. See, so they're eating. Like we read in John, it said before the Passover. That's talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. They were having Passover right then. Verse 12. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. And he shall show you a large upper room furnished mm -hmm. there make ready. Right, so I don't. That's why I said I don't know if they rented it or if the brother just gave it to him. To, you know, allowed them to keep it there. That's what the life comes from the upper room. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna bust about. up in the upper room. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, Lord's will, we bust up in the kingdom, man. Yes, yes, sir. Verse thirteen. Verse thirteen. 
And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. Yep. Go ahead. Verse 15. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. See, they were at when we read John 13, that was the Passover. Mm -hmm. Judas betraying him and all that stuff. And then they thought he wanted Judas to go and buy something. Hmm. That's the Passover. Not unleavened bread. But depending on what, who wrote it, they may call it um, whole thing Passover. Right. Or they call it unleavened bread. We know first we got Passover, then we got the Feast of Unleavened Bread after. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 16. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof. Until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Man, but he said, I have desired to eat this Passover with, with you before I suffer, man. Mm. That, that last meal. All right, now. Uh, let's go to 20, chapter 23, Luke 23. <clears throat> and 49 The book of St. Luke Chapter 23 and verse 49 And all his acquaintance And the women that followed him from Galilee Stood afar off mm -hmm. Beholding these things And behold There was a man named Joseph A counselor And he was a good man, good man. And a just The same had not consented to the council and deed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. Mm, he waiting on the kingdom. Oh. Go ahead. This man went unto Pilate and begged the, the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. Right. And they and that day was the preparation. That day. Meaning Passover is the preparation of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. The day before. Right. right. And that day was the preparation. And the Sabbath drew on. Go ahead. And the woman also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after and beheld the sepulcher mm -hmm. and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and, and rested, rested the Sabbath, the Sabbath day. day. According to the commandment. You shall do no work then. We read that. Right. Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. Okay. So that's Matthew, John, Luke, now Mark. Mark 14. Start at verse 1. <coughs> the book of St. Mark. Chapter 14. In verse 1, after two days was the feast of Passover. Passover? And under <laughs> unleavened and bread. And unleavened bread. See, this is real simple. This mm -hmm. is easy to understand. Passover and the feast of unleavened bread. Go ahead. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. Uh huh. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. So you got the Passover, and then you got the feast day, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. So they had him put to death on Passover. Right. He did everything as it is written, man, as it is written. Now, um, go to verse 12. Verse We're almost done, y'all. We're going to wrap it up. The book of St. Mark, chapter 14, and verse 12. And the first day. Of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover. See, remember that's why we went through all that, killing the Passover. Mm -hmm. In Exodus twelve, every man is supposed to kill the Passover, a lamb for an house. Then we read in Chronicles and Ezra, they killed the Passover, and and they had the feast of unleavened bread seven days. Go ahead. His disciples said unto him. Where wilt thou 
that we go and prepare that, that thou mayest eat, eat the Passover. The Passover, because he did not eat the feast of unleavened bread. He was dead. He had given up the ghost. Right. Go ahead. And he sendeth forth two of his disciples and said unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And whatsoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house. You good. You, you good. Let's drop that now. Let's go. Chapter. Hmm. You ain't got to worry about that. We touched on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. How they released the scapegoat. <clears throat> right. S scapegoat. Um, oh, no, you might be right. He got ghost after that. <laughs> Think about it, man. About to die. He knew it. Man, let me get up out you Let's go to um, 31. <laughs> Makes me wonder, did he ever repent? Who? Barabbas. I don't know. What at verse 29? <clears throat> the book of St. Matthew. I'm sorry. St. Mark, chapter 14, and verse 29. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Mm. And Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, That this day, even in this night, before the cock crowed twice, Thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehemently. If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. And they came to a place which was called Gethesemne. Oh, Gethesemne. Gethesemne. And he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John Where and began. At? Verse 33. What? Mark 15. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, Mark 15. Start at. Um, 29. The book of St. Mark, chapter 15 and verse 29. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days. Mm. Save thyself and come down from the cross. That's the daggone Pharisees. Go ahead. Yo, they sound like Satan too when Satan was tempting him. Mm -hmm. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. Likewise also... The chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, he saved others. Himself he cannot save. Mm. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross, and we may see and believe that they were crucified with him, reviled him. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until mm. the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? As it is written in Psalms 22. Go ahead. And some of them that stood by, when they heard it, said, Behold, he called Elias. And one ran and filled a spirit a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink saying, let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost and the veil yeah. of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. That was the end of the Levitical priesthood mm -hmm. and sacrifices. That was the end of it. Go ahead. And when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Mm -hmm. 
there were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, the less, and of Joseph. Joseph and Salome, hmm. Salome, which also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him and many other women which came up with him un into Jerusalem. And now when the evening was come, mm -hmm. because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath. The day before the Sabbath. Christ, the Passover was the day before the Sabbath. What's the Sabbath? Unleavened bread. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. So holy con that first day is a holy convocation and a Sabbath. You should do no work therein except cook. I said for what you need to eat. Mm -hmm. That was a preparation day. That is the day before the Sabbath. So you can't say that it was they was preparing for the weekly Sabbath. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Go ahead. Verse 43. Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate. Now and jump to verse four to six. Verse forty six, and he fought. I'm sorry, and he bought fine linen. So this is the same night that they, uh, same day that they thought um, Christ told Judas to go and buy stuff for the feast. Again, this is why we said you don't see nowhere that the Passover is a Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. And so this brother, he goes and buys the fine linen. Buy. I even looked this, the, he, the, the Greek word up. It's to purchase, mm. to buy. Go ahead. And he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a sepulcher, which was hewn out of a rock and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulcher. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Josias, uh, beheld where he was laid. Right. Right. So that's going to do it, y'all. Let's a look at this is why we're keeping. Pa give me, um, since I just thought about it, give me the calendar. So we, it's, it's up here. We're keeping Passover Monday night, which is what the third, and then the fourth Tuesday night is the Sabbath and the Holy Convocation. We're going to have the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So now everybody can understand what it is or why it is that we separate these two days. One day we do it in the house with close friends and family, and the other day is a holy convocation. We rent a place and have a feast. Mm -hmm. This is why we do it. We do it according to the scriptures as it is written. And man, we got to say, I don't even want to say shout out, but we got to give, we got to honor the king, man. We got to honor the king. If any, if there's any king in history that deserves to be the king, is Christ. For sure. The king's supposed to be, the king looks after his people. He cares for the welfare of his nation. Mm -hmm. So why you ain't never going to see democracy work. It's a big damn lie. Everybody thinks that they got to say, and they stupid as hell. <laughs> Don't know nothing. But everybody wants to ignore the king of this earth, man. Right. Man, Revelation um, 11 and, and 4. Yeah, <clears throat> Revelation 11 and 4. The book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 4. These are the two olive trees. The two olive trees is the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Israel. The olive tree that was split into them two uh, branches. Go ahead. And the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And the God of the earth 
is our king. <laughs> Right. The Christ, man, uh, chapter 15, verse 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 15, and verse 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, mm -hmm. Great and marvelous are thy works. Hold on, hold on. They sing... The song of Moses mm -hmm. and, and the song of the Lamb. <laughs> Sing. It's the same song, man. Yes, sir. <sighs> Sing. Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Mm. Just and true are thy ways, thou, thou king, king of, of saints. Saints. He's in Revelation 19. He's king of kings. Yo, all praises to the Most High, and we got to honor our King. We got to walk like our King. Yep. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, and verse 13. Give me 12, give me 12. Verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly. Hold on, hold on. Start at 9. Start at 9. I got to the book of first Corinthians chapter 13 and verse nine for we know for we know in part and we prophesy in part. We know and prophesy in part. Christ has not come and revealed everything to us. We know in part we see in part. Go ahead. But when that which is perfect is come, he has not come back yet. We're still in captivity. Right. He has not come back. Go ahead. Then that which is in part shall be done away. So when he come back, that which is in part will be done away. Meaning we're going to see then. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Right. I put away childish things. Go ahead. For now. We see through a glass darkly. Now, Paul is saying right now we see through a glass darkly. Darkly. Go ahead. But then face to face. When? When is then? It ain't now. Nope. It ain't. It damn sure ain't now. So when, when Christ comes back, when he comes back, we're living in extreme wickedness right now. Right. Finish that verse. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. John 4 and 1. 1 John 4 and 1. We're going to come right back there, here, though, and finish. Christ ain't came back and the knowledge, um, all knowledge has been given to us. Nope. The book of 1 John, chapter 4 and verse 1. Beloved. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm mm -hmm. in three. I want three. Three and one? Yeah. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, mm -hmm. that we should be called the sons of God. Go ahead. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Go ahead. Beloved. Now, are we the sons of God? And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. What we shall, we shall be. And these brothers have way more understanding than we got now. Right. Go ahead. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. See that? That ain't happened yet. We shall be like him. We ain't like him yet. No. We striving to be. We shall see him as he is. You got to be ready to give your damn life for your people and for the laws of your God. That's how you be like him. Right. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13 and verse 13. And now abideth faith. Faith. Hope. Hope that we make it to the kingdom. Hope that we get to see Christ in person. Mm -hmm. To learn how to walk like that. 
Charity. How to even look at our own brothers and sisters. Right. You got to look at your brothers like they something special. And your damn sisters too. These brothers are... Stop abusing these damn women, man. Go ahead. Charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is charity. How you treat your brothers and sisters, man. All praises to the most high. Um, Monday night, we're going to have Passover in our houses. Mm -hmm. Tuesday night, we're going to get together and party. Right. Lord say the same. Um, I'm Brother Jacob. And I'm Brother Joab. And as usual, um, Jeremiah on running OBS. That's been our class. Uh, Passover, a lamb for a house. Now you understand... With that, we say shalom. Book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times. It ain't nowhere that I can't go. You see me, you see him. I'm like children in the flame, though. It's because I follow him, though. He the light to my feet, it's like flames what I follow But let me stop for you, he those I've been crossed many times, so yes I know the pain, yo And forgive is what I ain't go Told the brother get in line, giving shots like a needle I've been sinning for real, murder, but I ain't killed for real Shot for shot to seal the deal, now I'm here to swallow the pill Now I'm woozy, don't know how to act, devil is mine, don't feel the attack My spirits of flesh had taken it back, and I ain't thinking about bringing it back Tap I think I hear it right The Lord come like a thief at night But I ain't believe the hype Yeah, like Saul when I seen the night But had me feeling like Paul when I found the light Cap, 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 cap You say you love your people But that's cap, cap, cap You swear you don't be lying But that's cap, cap, cap You say you did atonement But that's cap, cap, cap I say cap, cap Cap, cap, cap. You say you love your nation, but that's cap, cap, cap. You swear you done with envy, but that's cap, cap, cap. You say you did atonement, but that's cap, cap, cap. I say, so Peter said, if a brother sin against me, he offended. He does something unlawful. Could have took your money, could have tail barreled again. Any of those types. How many times should I forgive? Seven times? Because seven was a complete number. What did it matter? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven.